Well, good morning, good morning, and again I say, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and as always, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. It is Faith Friday, October the 30th, 2020, and not only has God allowed us to make it to the end of another work week, but we got one more day, and this entire month of October is over. And it's been nobody but the Lord who has kept us and sustained us and been good to us all the way. First and foremost, as always, to my fellowship family, we bless and thank God for each of you. And then to all of our friends and loved ones who tune in with regularity to our morning meditations. God bless each and every one of you. Well, you know, as always, I'm going to ask you that. Uh, you've done your self-check. My hope and prayer is that you've done so. And if you have, I'm certain you've come up with the same thing. You're doing okay, all things considered, especially given this very crisis-oriented climate that we're in. I'm going to follow up as always. Wanted to make sure that you're doing okay, mind, body, and soul. To that end, let's dive into our uh, passage of scripture for consideration and meditation today. It's birthed out of St. John, that eighth chapter. And I want to look at that 32nd verse, St. John chapter eight, verse 32. Uh, there you'll find these words and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Saints, about this time, uh, campaign and election time, four years ago, 2016, I became familiar with the term I'd never heard before. And chances are you hadn't either. It's called alternative truth. Alternative truths. And what really alternative truths seem to be is... Um, what I call a lie. Um, it suggests that truth can be subjective, which means that there could be alternative ways of looking at truth. Again, never heard of it, more frequently known as a lie, but um, the problem with alternative truths is that if you tell one alternative truth, you end up having to tell another alternative truth and before you know it, so many alternative truths have been spoken that you can become enmeshed in a web of alternative truths, bound by alternative truths. Jesus says here in this passage, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Y'all see that? Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The inference is that there all no, are no alternative truths. There is one truth. It's called the truth. And by knowing the truth, you shall be made free. Now, first and foremost, I need you to see something. Um, Jesus says, by knowing the truth, you shall be made free. Make you free. The truth shall make you free. The inference is uh, the freedom does not come from without. The freedom comes from within. Set you free would indicate that something externally opens up so that freedom can be accomplished. But when you say make free the inference is it happens from the inside jesus employs the word here he shall know the truth the word know in the original greek gnosko get this uh it refers to an intimate knowledge to come to know intimately in other words there's a close connection with the truth that makes you free you don't just casually know the truth it's not just an alternative maybe yes maybe no it's an intimate knowledge of the truth that leads to freedom. 
And I think that's powerful, saints of God, uh, because um, really this verse cannot be divorced from the grander, larger context. Way back in the first verse, we see Jesus in the temple teaching at the Mount of Olives. And the Bible says uh, that while he's teaching, um, Pharisees and scribes bring in a woman that they say had been caught in the act of adultery and they're trying to trap Jesus. Uh, Jesus had already stated who he was as the son of God. They don't know who he is. The Jews don't know him. And they try to trap him by bringing this woman caught in the act of adultery and says, the law of Moses says that such a one should be condemned and stoned. What do you say? The story is interesting when you read it. Jesus acts like he doesn't hear him and keeps doing what he's doing, stoops down and starts to write in the ground. They stay and continue to ask, uh, well, what would you do? So Jesus finally lifts his, his, heads up, his head up and says, he who is among you without sin cast the first stone. Puts his head back down, starts writing again. And then uh, the Bible says, each of them being convicted by their own conscious, conscience starts to leave starting with the oldest. And when Jesus looks up again, nobody's there. Jesus turns to the woman and says to the woman, where are thine accusers? The woman excitedly says, they're all gone. Where are those that condemn you? They're all gone. So Jesus turns to her and says, well, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Watch this. He doesn't condemn her nor does he condone her. He covers her and he corrects her. And now she has an intimate knowledge of the truth because Jesus is the truth. And he says, go and sin no more. And every time I can imagine this woman thought about sin, she remembered that encounter with the truth. And the truth literally liberated her, made her free. Can I submit and can I suggest to you that when you really know Jesus, see, the Jews, the Pharisees and the scribes, they knew of him, but they didn't know him. And he was literally convincing them of who he was when he said to them, listen, you're going to know the truth and the truth is going to make you free. They're arguing, listen, we, we be Abraham's seed. We've never been in bondage. They don't understand that they're bound from within because they don't understand who truth really is. When you know the truth and you really have a grasp of who he is on the inside, talking about Jesus, he liberates you. He frees you. He places you in a position that you are free indeed. That's what he says. Ultimately, he that the son makes free is free indeed because you've got truth and freedom on the inside. Can I suggest to you, can I submit to you and can I say to all of us that the good news is Jesus liberates us. Jesus makes us free. He ultimately is the liberator. He ultimately, as the truth, sets us, let me, let me correct that, makes us free from the inside. And once you've been freed from the inside, there are no chains that can hold you. He frees us mind, body, and soul. And that's all I want, that Jesus frees all of us so that we know him, not only in the parting of our sins, but we know him so intimately that try as he might, the devil cannot bind us. I just believe this is a season where there's no room for alternative truths. We got to know the truth. We got to be led and guided by Jesus, who is the truth in everything we do. He needs to be our conscience. He needs to be our guide. Jesus says, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When you're free, 
and he's made you free, you're free indeed. There are no chains on your mind. There's no chains on uh, your heart. There's no chains on your hands. I just believe that this is a season where those who don't know Jesus, you need to know him because he frees from the inside. He liberates, he looses the chains that the devil wants to uh, shackle us with. Let me, while I'm on this street, uh, just say evangelist, evangelistically, if you don't know Christ Jesus, it's time to get to know him because these perilous times that we're in are so critical um, that, listen, the devil is doing his best to make sure that he has a foothold in the lives of all that he can. And unless you know Jesus, you're bound. Jesus says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. To all who know Jesus, with that freedom comes responsibility. Our job is to make sure in this season, everybody knows him. We can't afford not to know who he is intimately. That's enough, that's all I got. This is Faith Friday. Uh, that being said, let's pray because uh, we're going into uh, a week next week that is critical. And I don't want anybody to operate in bondage. I want us to know who Jesus is and know what Jesus would have us to do. That's all I got, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, come we before you thankful and grateful for another day's journey, not taking it for granted, but understanding it's but by your grace and your mercy that we're still alive and well. Come before you now, God, uh, asking that you uh, would touch your people, help us to understand um, that with great liberty, with great freedom comes great responsibility, that we who are uh, those who are in the know, as to who you are, uh, must operate as such. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that um, the light of Christ be seen and shown in this season, uh, that no matter what happens, uh, that we're able to demonstrate what living in accordance with your will and your word is as believers, as Christians. Lord, let us allow our light to so shine uh, that others may see our good works and glorify you. This is a critical season, God, that those that know you must show it. We bless you and we thank you, God, and we ask for your continued and consistent covering and keeping over all of us. Keep us safe, free from all manner of hurt, harm, danger, and or incident. And God, uh, whatever we fail to ask, please don't fail to give. For it's in Christ Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all on this Faith Friday. All that believed and received. Said amen. That's all, y'all. I uh, hope you've been blessed this week uh, on Take Charge Tuesday, on Worship Wednesday, and Thankful Thursday, and now Faith Friday. I hope you got something that ministered to you and blessed you. Um, and when we go into this weekend, I pray uh, that you would... Um, certainly be wise and be safe uh, as the coronavirus is spiking yet again. We've got to be diligent and be vigilant. Um, let me just say this. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Watch your distance. And until we see each other on the other side of the weekend, um, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and give you peace as you shelter in place and shelter in peace. Matter of fact, hope to see you on Sunday on YouTube, 1045 Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. God bless. Talk to you soon.